Okay, hello everyone. More of the Old Testament, more of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, the Bible, the book of Genesis, and the Pearl of Great Price. So, as I said before, this year I'm gonna, every time I talk about a book of the Bible, especially the Torah, uh, which is the five first books of Moses, the Pentateuch, uh, basically I will use the Jewish uh, segmentation of the book. So, the chapters we've studied so far, so the Jews who, the Jews, segment the Bible into what they call parshas for their weekly readings and they segment each parsha and segments to be read across the week. So believe it or not so far we've been just in the first parsha which is called Bereshit in the beginning which handles all the way from the creation the creation of the earth when God began to create the heavens and the earth all the way until the first few verses of Genesis 6 when it talks about Noah. So when it ends the Parsha Bereshit, which is the first six chapters almost, end with Noah. They begin with the creation of earth. And now we're about to see or read about the destruction of the earth destruction of him, every living thing on the earth except for those that God chooses to save and who choose to be saved actually so it ends with that but just a few verses introducing Noah introduce setting the scene and then we start the next Pasha which is called Noah in Hebrew which is basically Noah it's that, that parsha, that, that segment is entitled after Noah. Now, here's an interesting thing I've, I've looked at over this last week. I've been reading from the Saadiya Gawon, Rabbi Saadiya Gawon Arabic translation of the Torah, which goes back to like 800 AD. He translated it in Arabic because I believe he, Hebrew wasn't really widely spoken at the time and he was afraid that Hebrew is going to go extinct, which it really almost did. And he translated the Torah in Arabic, which is an excellent translation. A group based in Germany and New York of rabbis decided to re revive it and put the printed the translation out. And I hurried and bought it as soon as I heard about it. It's, it's really excellent if you read Arabic. Anyway, most of you probably don't. But here is one thing I, I discovered. So the name Seth, and I promise this is relevant, the name Seth, when, when Adam and Eve had Seth, or the person we in English call Seth, because uh, what I realized is in Hebrew, he in the Saudi Goan translation, he uses the letter T, to, to, uh, T and Sheen to translate the name of Seth. So it was Sheet. And when I looked into it deeper, I have another translation of the Torah, uh, which is also in Arabic, but it's based on the, the Septuagint, and it was translated by Orthodox Egyptians. There was an interesting little article in there about the name of Seth, and his. if you remember, uh, when Adam has him, he says, I'll call him Seth because he, he will helped me start a new posterity. I'm sorry, I didn't get the reference in here, but he talks about how Seth will be a new posterity. He will be a new righteous posterity to, re to replace the one that uh, uh, Abel was supposed to have. So in the, the, in the Septuagint translation, it's actually Shed, and that's the name. And Sadia Gawan uses the letter T, which is common amongst Israelites who lived in the Arab world, so they use the T instead of the D most of the time. Anyway, that name, Shid, means to construct, to build, to, to start. So that gave that phrase that Adam, you know, the Adam's explanation for the name, it, it made it make more sense. So his name is Shid, 
which means, you know, in Arabic and Semitic and Semitic languages in, in general, that root Shin Dal refers to building and starting something new. Anyway, so the reason I say this is because Seth was supposed to have this righteous posterity. It was given promises. It was supposed to be righteous, have a righteous world and all of that. But that's not what happens, as is the story with humans, you know, as it says in Moses 8 in the Pearl Great Price, uh, men are always evil. They always think evil in their hearts. So now we have a, a situation where there is this corruption and Noah, who is a descendant of Shed or Seth, I don't want to confuse you, Seth, but really it's Shed. Uh, he is supposed to, who was, as I said in the previous podcast, he was supposed to bring comfort to the world. Now he himself needs to be comforted as he goes to this evil world and he's preaching righteousness. He's preaching, again, repentance, which is the theme almost of the book of Moses. Repent, repent, uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, like our fathers, you receive the Holy Ghost, you will know everything, but the world is refusing to heed that message. And instead, in verse 21 in chapter 8, they talk about, you know, we're eating, we're drinking, we're getting married, you know, we're having children. Basically, they're having all the goods of life. And it seems that prosperity, when we humans have prosperity, we tend, our hearts tend to harden and we forget our creator we forget god so noah is uh, is going around and he's having no luck so now the lord tells him that there will be this flood so he instructs him to build what we call what in english has traditionally been translating uh, it's translated as ark but that word ark i mean it's it's archaic it's vague to me it, it gives always the impression of a ship and we think of shipbuilding some translations you know mentions a box but in hebrew the word that is used is teba and in the arabic translation by gawon he uses correctly tabut which is the equivalent and tabut that word for you know what we use in english as art that word tabut symbolize is usually reserved for the boxes that you bury dead people and we call it tabut you know the, to this day in arabic it's tabut it's what you put a dead person in it's like coffin and you bury this person and this is this is uh, a sign of things to come because as we know the whole flood is a symbolism i mean it, it happened but it also symbolized the death of the world the death of evil and the birth of a new world so these people who are in the teba and the tabut and the in the box and the ark when when they emerge from the flood they are getting into a new life now here is another nugget that i will close the segment on this tabut this teba will be in the water will be in in the flood uh with the people who are in it who we'll talk about later and we'll talk about that part of the story later in a bit of detail hopefully tomorrow they will be in for 40 days and again uh, the number 40 the the number 40 is one of those holy numbers in judaism it's uh, it's a multiple of four four is a holy number like the four mothers but here is the association, two associations with the number 40 from Hebrew literature that I find fascinating. So, for example, uh, modern Jews, uh, Orthodox Hasidic Jews have to go to a mikvah to get purified. And this mikvah, for example, has to be filled with 40 sa'ah, 40 measures, let's say, of water. And you have to be exactly in 40 measures of water so that when you go in and you wash, you come out and it has to be living water. It has to be running water. It can't be still water. So if you're in, if you're in New York in the Crown Heights area, you know, where Hasidic Jews live, the, those mikvahs, you know, you can, I doubt that you can visit, but they, they have them there and they have them everywhere, you know, Orthodox Jews practice. 
but there is that that association with purification with the, with the number 40 the other association i found that is fascinating is an article by a famous american well he lived in the u.s a rabbi schneerson where he talks about uh, 40 years and uh, the number 40 and associates it with the number of years that it will take for the resurrection uh, process to take place uh, in the messianic age fascinating stuff the number 40 the people will be in you know the earth will be flooded for 40 days people will be in a taba will be in a ta taboot and even though they are alive inside of there they they will emerge and they will bring life to the world and you know that is it for today uh, one thing uh, i want you to think about is the relationship and this is something i'm always fascinated with and interested in interested in hearing people's responses to but think about the relationship between prosperity between power between authority why is it that when we have these instead of being thankful for things instead of being grateful instead of being humbled uh, by by these blessings why do we rebel why do we become hard-hearted why doesn't it soften our hearts i have my own answers but i'm always interested in hearing answers uh, from others so let me let me know thank you and i say say this in the name of jesus christ amen